Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. I have here Fiat Fullback to look at. I uh, just had to double check that, yeah, Fiat Fullback, but it basically is, to me, looks like an L2, Mitsubishi L200. Alright, so yeah, it's definitely got Mitsubishi engine. So, we're going to get inside and have a look. Okay, so inside here, this is what the customer is um, looking at. So we've got like a flashing smoke emissions symbol. There's no engine light on. Okay, so I'm going to use the Launch X431 Euro and we'll diagnose it. See what faults we have. What happened? Log in. Okay, let's get it connected to the car. Uh, it's a Fiat. Right. Yeah, so I just realised it's a Fiat badge, but we'll see what it comes up under as a, as a Fiat. Then I might go back and just manually try and tell this that it's a Mitsubishi L200. Okay, so I've done the scan. It was quite quick, really, but yeah, P252F. Please refer to manual. Let me go back. I'm going to try and tell this to stop identifying as a Fiat. Going as a Mitsubishi. Um, so that's what it is, really. Mitsubishi. Alright, so we've got the same code under the Mitsubishi system, but it gives you a better description, which is engine oil level too high. So again, usual oil dilution issues with these. Um, I don't know what we can find here on live data. Engine oil level two. Right, let's just cl let's just click all of that and see what we coming up with here. 1550 cc. I'm going to try and look at uh, DPF. Uh, hang on a minute. Let's take off, take away all that oil stuff for a minute because unselect, and then we're going to go to the DPF itself. DPF. Uh, DPF difference pressure. DPF lamp. DPF temperature, let's see what else we've got here. Anything relating to the soot, I'll be looking at. DPF soot load in the last region. Mm. Right, so I'm just going to take all of these. None of them really make 100% sense of what's going on. Right, uh, 10 millibars of pressure, so it's about double of what it should be. Oh, it's actually jumping to 15 there. Um, I don't know why it's jumping in five. Some cars are strange like that. They don't go up in like 11, 12. Some cars will jump zero to 10 and then 10 to 20. Um, right, let's see. Pre non uniform soot. I don't know, I even know what that means. None of this soot stuff makes sense. Let me see if we can find the average distance between regions. Because if it's got oil dilution, could be a case of its region and too often. Okay, so it looks like we've got stuff like the average speed when it's doing regen, but not the average distance. I can't see it here. So 3000 RPM have around about 100 millibars of pressure. Okay, so these engines, obviously, they're known to have oil dilution issues. Mitsubishi, I think themselves, they know that. So this is why they put this X mark on the dipstick. So you got your minimum mark, your full, and then this is the um, tolerance that they give you for the oil dilution. So, so they know the oil is going to dilute, and it, this is where the X sort of danger mark is once it gets here. So the oil has now been changed. It was up here, but the customers had the oil changed. Okay, so it's, it's had an oil change in the last few days, so the oil level has been now corrected. 
um, but it's obviously affected the DPF so we're gonna have to get in here into one of these pipes put some clean and flush fluid down wash out the DPF and um, just reset everything really okay so we've got the cleaning kit now set up this is the fluid I'm using and the gun so the connection point for this particular car is you've got before your DPF tube here and then after down here so just followed it around the back we've got that connected over there this is the one we're going into okay so what I've done is about a 10 second burst into the DPF while the engine's off let it sit for five minutes now we've got the engine running and we're gonna just put the rest of it in with the engine running it sits quite close to the to the engine this one so we don't want to overfill the DPF with the engine off because it can actually backfill into the engine so I'm going to leave it with the engine running now and I'm just going to pull the trigger until all the fluid's gone in. Okay, so what I've done now is I've disconnected the tube. We just give that a minute to let it blow out any sort of condensation that's in the pipe before we reconnect it. And then we can reconnect this rubber hose here. And then just get the jubilee clip, spring clip. Push it back down. So come around the back. Let's put that over there a little bit. So we'll have all that sort of stuff coming out the exhaust there. It's just foam from the liquid. And then we're going to get back inside. We'll hold the revs up at sort of 3000 RPM for a couple of minutes. Now, while that's happening, we're going to get a lot of smoke like that. 3000 RPM. We're down to sort of 45 to 50, 40 now. So that's where we wanted it to be, exactly about half of where it was. It was still sort of coming down, you see it's jumping between 35 now. And we let it idle down, and we're idling now between 0 to 5, mostly on 0 there. So now what we need to do, to get rid of this light, we can't just clear the fault code, well normally we can't, we'll, we'll try. Let's see what happens if we clear the fault code. We usually have to say that the DPF has been replaced. So the fault code's been cleared, but we're still flashing down there. Okay, so what we'd need to do here is go to special function and tell it that the DPF, let's have a look at initialization, DPF exchange, yes. That's completed. So we'll execute exit now and then we'll do an engine oil exchange as well. So let's reset to zero. Go back. Now we can clear the fault code. And we should now have our light stop flashing. Okay, now what I'm going to do is just take it on a test drive for, let's say, 10 to 20 minutes and then we'll get back. Once everything's confirmed, it's okay. I know it's going to be okay now, it's all fine. We've, as you can see there, we've got the pressure down from around about 100 down to 35 to 40. And we have reset the oil contamination level, so everything now is reset. So we'll take it on a little test drive and just confirm everything's okay. So we'll just take it on a little drive. Not the collaboration you'd be expecting, is it? A Fiat with Mitsubishi. It's a, it's basically Mitsubishi that rebadges a Fiat. Now, surprisingly, what these the last two two um, L two hundred Mitsubishi L two hundreds I've driven were sl very very laggy on the gears, um, very slow, not very responsive. This one is a lot more responsive than the Mitsubishi variants. I don't know if, it's, if there's anything that they've changed. Maybe they've Maybe it's a different remap or something, but the gearbox feels more responsive and the actual torque and power of the vehicle feels a, bit, a little bit better as well. So the gear change is definitely more responsive on this one, for some reason. Maybe I've, maybe I've just driven a couple of bad L200s, but this one seems to drive just a little bit nicer. Most of these Mitsubishi Toyotas, it's look if you if you hold the revs, it's just it sort of takes 
seems like you're doing a lot of revs for not much acceleration. Uh, when you compare it to sort of like a VW Amarok, I've got a VW Amarok and the, the gearbox is just way, way more responsive. Now what I mean by that is the VW Amarok with the automatic transmission to me it feels like a, it feels like you're driving a manual but it's just instantly changing gears for you there's no lag or no over revving on these you get a lot of you know you put your foot down it goes up to 3000 rpm and then the vehicle is picking up speed after the revs the, the VW ver version of these pickups doesn't do that it just you know changes gears exactly like a manual so you've got a lot of lag with these type of gearboxes this feels like 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 an automatic like the old type automatics you know the um whatever it's called <laughs> uh an original automatic transmission of my brain's gone a bit i've got brain freeze at the minute a conventional automatic gearbox is the word i was looking for but yeah like obviously the vw uses um that's the zf8 gearbox but it does feel like a like a manual with a clutch get clutched um automated clutch basically so there we are as our end result let it idle down obviously the engine's a bit warmer now as it as, it, as an engine heats up a little bit you do get a slightly a slight increase in dpf pressure but yeah we're all good right so the next things that i would advise with one of these types of pickups is either, either it's it's the mitsubishi or the Fiat version or basically all japanese cars have this issue with oil dilution and if you have oil changes of 15,000 miles or so, you're going to suffer with a lot more oil dilution than you would if you're doing oil changes at say six to eight, to maximum 8,000 miles I would say, but somewhere between 5,000 to, let's say 6,000 miles to 8,000 miles maximum on, if, on your oil changes and you will not see this, uh, this issue as often. But you don't just change your oil, you have to make sure you do the oil reset as well. So more often oil changes, equals less DPF issues on these types of cars. Okay, so that's it, we're all finished on that Fiat, uh, Fiat Fullback. See you on the next video.